Good morning, friends. It gives me immense pleasure to be here for my course, Flight Mechanics. Today, I am here to discuss about cruise performance. We know that the cruise is the performance in which aircraft is reaching to certain height and it will maintain that certain height. So, in that case, we have some equations of motion and those equations of motions are related to the cruise performance. I am Dr. Vaidhi Duvedi, Professor from IRE Hyderabad. Today's topic I am going to discuss about monkey bath session first one, then introduction to cruise, range and endurance, specific fuel consumption, range equation for propeller driven engine. So in monkey bath on excess power, excess power of any aircraft is the difference between the power available and the power required by the airplane. So if I will here, I will just, here is the velocity, this is the power. So this is the PA power available and this is the plot for PR power required. So here this power required is to counter the drag of the aircraft. And if PA is the power which is produced by the engine and we are talking about today excess power. So how much is the difference between power available and power required? These are the excess power. So here you will get some point where excess power is zero. If the excess power is zero, your aircraft will not be able to climb beyond this and your velocity will not go beyond this. This is the max velocity maximum velocity, this is the minimum velocity that is V star, this is the minimum drag velocity V m d, this is the minimum drag velocity and if you draw a plot a tangent from here, it will be cutting here, this is the minimum velocity for maximum range. To have the maximum range, your velocity should be this. So, if the airplane has more excess power, then it can climb and do all maneuvering very easily. So, if you have the more power or more excess power is here in this zone, you, you are flying here, your excess power is very high. So, if you are flying in this, you can do more maneuvering. If you are flying in this, you can do le less. If you are flying in this, you cannot do any manual. So we have find the minimum thrust required velocity and the minimum power required velocity as given below. For thrust required minimum, what is the CL required? And for power required minimum, what is the CL required? The velocity for a minimum thrust required, VTR minimum is equal to under root 2 W by S rho by under root CD naught by K. And for the minimum power required, P V P minimum is equal to 2 into W by S rho 3 C D naught by K. So, if you want the power required, your C L is different, power required minimum. And if you are the thrust required minimum, your C L will be different. So, these equations A and B are the cruise flight only. The message is clear from for the designer that I need to fly the aircraft where your VTR minimum for the jet engine and for the propeller engine, your VPR should be minimum. So that accordingly this you have to select that your W by S should be in that zone and CD naught also should be in that zone. With the thrust required minimum in which CL is such that CL is equal to under root CD naught by K. If loading of the aircraft wing that is W by S is less, the velocity for TR minimum will be less. So if the wing loading is less means wing is bigger wing, 
then tr minimum will be less designer will designer will select the wing loading ws for transport or the cargo aircraft lesser means wing area is high and the more and more wing area for passengers and cargo airplane for fighter aircraft maneuvering is important requirement maneuvering is possible when sufficient excess power is available this you can see here maneuvering you need a excess power as much as possible at point is available if you see here at point 2 here and at point 1 at point 2 ta and the tr are same if aircraft fly at two single prime here it is means higher velocity the ta is not sufficient so speed will tend to back to the point 2 and if the aircraft is flying at lower velocity ta is available we we'll try to more move towards the point 2 this makes the aircraft is statically stable for speed at point 2. It, it means this point 2 is statically stable. But if you see about this point 1, in this point 1, if your aircraft is flying at this, so what will happen? You have sufficient power and it will start increasing the speed. It will not go towards one, but it will go towards this. So it is, and if you are flying above this here, then what will happen? It is not available, it will go beyond that. So point one is statically unstable. If at point one dies, the speed is more than the one, and TA is also more than the velocity, then velocity will increase and will never reach back to the point one. The tendency is to go away from point 1. So, point 1 is unstable from velocity point of view. Here, V is tall is equal to under root 2 ws by rho cl max. This is the V is tall here. Your speed should not go less than this. So, if the velocity V is less than the V is tall, so then it is unstable. Now, I will discuss about the power required. Power required is nothing but it is power which is countering the drag. The gap between PA, that is the power available, and the power required is called the excess power. How we can add more value for this on aircraft performance? Let us draw a diagram of aircraft. It is shown here. This is the aircraft. This is the aircraft, this is the wing here, and this is moving with the velocity v, and this is the thrust and the velocity in the same direction. Weight is towards the ground, lift is perpendicular to the velocity vector v. So, here will be the drag. So, we can see here that t minus d, t minus d minus w sin gamma also in this direction. So, T minus W, T minus D minus W sin gamma is equal to M dV by dt and for T minus D for a static case this dV by dt is equal to 0. So, T minus D minus W sin gamma is equal to 0. So, T minus D is equal to W sin gamma or T minus D by W is equal to sin gamma. So, in this way, we can find out this gamma is a flight path angle. Gamma is what? It is a flight path angle. So, Tv minus D, if you multiply it by V, this equation, Tv minus Dv divided by W is equal to here V sin gamma. 
this v sin gamma is a vertical velocity this is a v sin gamma this one so v sin gamma so and this is called the excess power so it is called the rate of climb so this rate of climb is equal to excess power divided by w so where the rate of climb is equal to t minus tv minus dv by w is equal to v sin gamma and this v sin gamma is it is v sin gamma it is called the rate of climb so v at excess power is a maximum will give the highest rate of climb so wherever you are flying where you have the this is the velocity this is the velocity for highest rate of climb so th this is the velocity at which it gives the maximum rate of climb so let's now revisit that cruise in an accelerated flight level cruise means wing level altitude fix or the constant so cruise is an accelerated flight means once your aircraft is flying this is the cruise and if i make the one aircraft here like this this is the weight this is the lift this is the thrust and this is the drag so l minus w is equal to 0 t minus d is equal to 0 no acceleration so this is the first condition and also your aircraft should be level you should fly like this no wing should not be rolling it should be straight wing like this it is flying and altitude the distance between ground it should be maintained the same distance if you are do, maintaining these three conditions it means your aircraft is in cruise flight so to have the cruise flight these one two three you first should be unaccelerated flight second your aircraft should be level and it should maintain the same altitude if it is three things are there you, you can see that your aircraft is in now we will discuss about the cruise performance cruise is a flight phase that occurs when the aircraft levels after a climb to a set altitude before it begins to descend cruising usually consumes the majority of the flight and it may include changes in heading direction of flight at a constant air speed and altitude for most passenger aircraft the cruise flight phase consumes most of the aircraft's level fuel this lengthens the aircraft and raises the optimum altitude for fuel economy now i will discuss about range and the endurance range is defined as the total distance measured with respect to the ground traversed by the aircraft on a full tank of fuel endurance is defined as the total time that an airplane stay in the air on a full tank of fuel so range is a distance defined as the total distance measured with respect to the ground traversed by airplane on a full tank of fuel endurance is a time as a total time that an aircraft airplane stays in the air on a full tank of fuel a specific fuel consumption is defined as the weight of the fuel consumed by the reciprocating engine per unit power per unit time so it is the weight per unit power and per unit time so this is the kg per watt per second this is the your unit for a specific fuel consumption so I, I will discuss about fuel consumption definition for the propeller powered airplane and then jet powered airplane because I have discussed previously also there is a CT and there is C. C is for the propeller powered and CT is for the jet powered. So propeller powered the specific fuel consumption SFC is 
weight of the fuel consumed per unit power per unit time. So that is the definition for the specific fuel consumption. When we talk about the jet powered airplane, so the thrust it is called the thrust specific fuel consumption (TSFC) and there is a little difference. We don't use the power; we use the thrust. And there is a difference between the power and the thrust. So that we have to take care of. So weight of the fuel consumed per unit thrust per unit time. So weight of the fuel per unit thrust. Per unit time. This is the unit. Uh, this is the definition. So kg per newton second. Thrust is measured in the newton, and power is measured in a watt. So that unit we have to take care of during solving our numericals. Range equation for the propeller power. Actually, this I have already covered in my previous lecture. Range is the total distance measured with respect to the ground. Traversed by an airplane on one load of fuel, denoted by R. So, how much distance it is covering by the given amount of fuel? Then we say that it is a range. Consider the following weight. W naught is a gross weight of the airplane, including everything: full fuel, load, payload, crew structure, etc. W F is a weight of the fuel. This is an instantaneous value, and it ch changes as fuel is consumed. Then another is a W1 is a weight of the airplane when the fuel is empty. Means there is no fuel, so this is called the W1 total uh, weight is fuel is consumed. Now, at any instant during the flight, the weight of the airplane will be W is equal to W1 plus WF. The weight of the aircraft W1 plus WF. And what is the W1? W1 is a weight of the airplane, empty weight of the airplane. Okay, empty weight of the airplane. So and plus this is the fuel. So this is W1 is a empty weight of airplane, and WF is fuel weight. Okay, so now if you see, so since WF is a fuel weight is decreasing during the flight, W is also decreasing. Indeed, the time rate of change of the weight that is dW by dt is equal to dWF by dt or it is WF. So, where both dW by dt and wf are negative number because fuel is being consumed and hence w and wf are decreasing. Range is intimately connected with the engine performance through the specific fuel consumption for a propeller driven reciprocating engine combination the SFC is C is given minus wf by t where P is a power, where P is the shaft horsepower and the minus sign is necessary because WF is negative and C is always treated as positive quantity for a jet propeller airplane, the thrust SFC that is called CT is equal to minus WF by T, where T is a thrust available and C can be expressed in terms of CT. And this we can write as a CT is equal to CV infinity by N propeller, that is the efficiency of the propeller. So, where Nita propeller is the propeller efficiency, equation 2 is particularly useful for generating an equivalent thrust specific for propeller driven airplane. Now, we will discuss the derivation of range equation by help of this. A general relation for the calculation of range can be obtained as follows. Consider an airplane in a steady level flight. Let us, S denotes the horizontal distance covered over the ground. Assuming a stationary atmosphere, there is no wind, 
the airplane velocity v infinity where v infinity we can write ds by dt that is distance by time per unit time traveling distance is velocity or we can say that this distance so v infinity is equal to ds by dt or ds is equal to v infinity into dt so this ds we have got here but we know that ct is equal to minus rate of change of weight divided by t dwf fuel consumed per unit time plus divided by thrust so here we can write this dt if we take here here this dt is equal to minus dwf divided by ct into t okay so here dt is equal to minus dwf it is a fuel weight ct is a thrust specific fuel consumption into thrust so now here we can write this ds so here if you put ds v infinity into dwf divided by ct into t so we got this distance so now if we see that from the equation 1 we can write that dwf is equal to dw because both are okay, related so now if you see your ds is equal to minus v infinity ct into w for this dw we can here write v infinity by ct into here w by t and this w we have made here so it is same here so now we can write that for the level flight steady and the level flight for weight we can write l and for t is equal to we can write the d so this equation 4 can be become ds is equal to minus v infinity by ct for w we can write l here and for t we can write d here so l by d into dw by w now we can see here that the range r of the airplane is obtained by integrating equation 5 between s is equal to 0 where the fuel tanks are full and where and hence w is equal to w naught and s is equal to r where the fuel tanks are empty and hence w is equal to w1 so we can integrate r the range is equal to 0 to r ds w naught is equal to initial weight this is the final weight v infinity by ct l by d dw by d so now if we integrate this we can get r is equal to w1 to remove this minus we have inverse this limits w1 to w0 v infinity by ct l by d dw by w so now this equation 6 is the general equation for the range this is called the general equation for the range and this is also called the Breguet equation. So, for a preliminary performance analysis, equation 6 is usually simplified. If we assume flight at a constant speed v, ct and l by d, then equation 6 becomes like this r is equal to this we have taken because we have assumed that these parameters are constant so we have taken out from the integration v infinity by ct l by d integration w1 to w0 dw by w and if we integrate we will get like this r is equal to v, v infinity by ct l by d log ln natural log w0 by w1 and this is called the Breguet range equation. Equation number seven. This is the name is given by this person that is called Breguet range equation. So R is equal to V infinity by CT L by D ln W naught by W one. So, for the propeller aircraft, 
we have to add something here. So R is equal to V infinity by CT L by D ln W naught by W1. Here we can write for this CT, we can write neta of propeller by CV infinity. We have multiplied by V infinity L by D ln W naught by W1. We can further simplify it by thesis cancel. So, eta, eta of the propeller by C L by D log W naught by W1. So, this is for the propeller aircraft. So, here we can write that R is equal to eta SFC CL by CD ln W initial by W final. This is the W initial and this is the W final and you will get the range, the distance, how much it is covered. How to maximize the range? So, we have the, so to maximize this range, neta should be maximum. That is the first case. Your propeller efficiency should be maximum. Lowest possible SFC. This is the lowest. Your fuel consumption should be lowest. Highest ratio of W initial to the, this should be highest. Max. This should be maximum. Then fly with the maximum CL by CD. Maximum. So three things should be maximum and one thing should be minimum. That is the fuel consumption should be, a specific fuel consumption should be minimum and remaining things should be maximum. Factors affecting the range. This range is equal to neta SFC CL by CD ln W initial. So it is a structure and the material. This is the aerodynamics and this is the propulsion. So all the three important pillars of aeronautics and aerospace are important for this range equation. You should understand the aerodynamics, you should understand the propulsion, you should also understand the structures and materials. So in the next lecture, I am going to discuss about range for the jet powered airplane, types of range, different velocities, constant altitude range equations, cruise climb, constant velocity cruise, range of the propeller aircraft. This I think I am going to discuss. The references are Anderson JD, Aircraft Performance and Design, International Edition, Migra Hills, first edition, 1999. Isle, Isle by ME, Aircraft Performance, Theory and Practice, AIA Education Series, AIA. Any questions, you are welcome to ask. It gives me immense pleasure to reply you. My email is yd dvedi at the rate gmail.com. You can also WhatsApp me 9705982279. Please do like and subscribe my channel and please write the comments on the comment box. Till then, goodbye. See you. Thank you very much for the joining. Please be tuned for my next lecture. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.